This video explains the factors in the diamond of evaluation. Efficiency is an important criteria for evaluating transportation investments. Important characteristics of efficiency include the traditional factors and benefit cost analysis discussed in other videos. But we want to go beyond efficiency. Equity is an important consideration in, in evaluation. How well does the system serve different groups of people? If we make all of our investments that serve one group of people at the expense of another group of people, that's generally considered unfair. So equity is a fancy name for fairness. Fairness is always in the eye of the beholder, but the construction of the interstate highway system was widely perceived as unfair by certain groups. It's well documented that I-94 through St. Paul went primarily through the Rondo neighborhood. The Rondo neighborhood was minority at the time, and to this day, with relatively low levels of political power. One of the reasons that it went through the neighborhood was because it was a minority neighborhood with low levels of political power. They wouldn't resist, and more cynically, this was a way of dispersing the people who lived in that neighborhood. We wouldn't make that same decision today because it wouldn't pass an equity test. Other aspects of transportation decisions remain unfair today in different ways. Look at the corridor that's been selected, shown in blue, for the Botano light rail transit line that runs from Minneapolis to the northwest suburbs. It's skipping North Minneapolis, shown in green. So there was an alternative to go through North Minneapolis, but instead it's going through a park. So it provides better service to the people who live in the northwest suburbs and less service to the people who live in North Minneapolis. You can ask your politicians why that's the case. The point is not the unfairness of any particular route, but that system design should consider equity as a measure of effectiveness. There are environmental aspects. It would be great if we had cars that had negative carbon emissions. It's hard to imagine exactly what that technology would be. This slide shows a concept car called the Yaz using photoelectrics with a metal organic frame. But you can aim to minimize emissions so that they are approximately zero, using electric power only, for instance. We would need to ensure that the electricity is generated from something with no carbon emissions. Throughout the life cycle, the technology that's used in the factory that makes the solar panels is itself manufactured in solar power plants that were made by the solar panels that were themselves free of any emissions, and so on. You could have close to or zero emission vehicles. You could also have vehicles that did not have other types of pollutants such as the waste from used batteries. We have quality of experience that users face. Given a choice between driving a Yugo and driving a Mercedes, which are you going to prefer? The Yugo was a 1980s import from Yugoslavia. It was before the Iron Curtain was lifted, so the Yugo was produced in a communist country. It was notorious for falling apart upon delivery. Comparatively, cars are pretty well made today. Which of those two would you rather have? Well, probably the Mercedes. Why? Because the experience of riding the Mercedes is better. It's a higher quality ride. People are willing to pay for this. So wealthy people buy better cars be because they're better. Not because they go faster. They drive at exactly the same speed limit that everyone else is subjected to. Maybe because of the lower maintenance issues, but primarily because the experience people get while driving or riding in the car. It's smoother, it's quieter, it's more comfortable. Similarly, given a choice on the central corridor between riding the light rail transit line or the local number 16 bus serving the same route, all the things being equal, which would you choose? Probably the train. It will have a better ride experience. That doesn't mean that trains should always be preferred to buses, but that all else equal train rides are usually preferred. It doesn't mean that public agencies should always invest in trains, or that they shouldn't, since there are many dimensions, including efficiency and cost, which should also be considered. When we're building public transportation facilities, we don't generally give much credence to experience in the United States. We are concerned primarily about the efficiency aspects, the benefits in terms of speed and throughput, and the cost in terms of money spent. But there's a trade-off between the money spent and the quality of the experience, as with anything else. The experience at the new Viking Stadium will be very, very nice. If you get into one of the skyboxes, it will be a luxury that, if you are watching this video, you cannot imagine and probably will not be able to personally afford. Even the skyboxes at the Gopher Stadium are pretty nice, but clearly they are not as nice as the ones at the Viking Stadium are going to be. I had a meeting in one of those skyboxes at TCF Stadium where the Gophers play. It was a nice place to present. They had a large screen TV so you can watch TV while you're watching the football game. Not exactly sure why. In football stadiums, we value the experience very highly because the whole reason for the stadium is about the event. It is the destination. In contrast, transportation is viewed as a means to an end. In transportation, we don't value the experience very highly, not when we're using public transportation, or even for most people when they're flying in mass transportation on a commercial aircraft. First class is certainly a better experience than economy class, 
but there are many more seats in economy class than in first class, and most people who are in first class get there by virtue of being frequent flyers and being upgraded by the airline rather than paying the first class fare. Certainly, some people will pay the first class fare, or somebody else pays it for them. It's a nice experience, but at my current salary, I'm not going to pay $4,000 for eight hours of nice experience. If I had a billion dollars, I probably would. We're balancing efficiency, we're balancing equity, we're balancing the environment, we're balancing the experience. And who is making this balancing decision? If it's a public investment, then the public sector is, and public officials are making the decision. They are trying to weight how much people care about various things. We're making trade-offs, and just to keep all of the ideas beginning with the letter E, we use the word expediency to describe that.